Hello everyone, um, so gameplay at the beginning of this video will have been this sort of, I would say the final form of my magic find bow character. Um, I ended up transitioning from lightning arrow to ice shot and then doing some funky tech with the Mana forged arrows, which I'll go into shortly. Um, but this is sort of the setup that I'm uh, probably going to stick with for the time being, for like solo quant at least. So right now I'm sitting on 60% quant and then 106% rarity. And I dropped the gold flask. And I'm trying this. So I have item rarity linked to my Herald of Ice. So I'm not sure if this works. I know if the Herald of Ice explosions kill a monster. Um, it will work, but I had a free socket, so I thought I might as well just s put it in there. Um, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it if it does, even better. But I'm not going to be 100% sure. I know it works if the Herald kills it, but I'm not sure if the Herald uh, kills mobs. Um, same Venters, and then obviously Goldworm. And I ended up dropping the Magic Find gloves for something like this. So I've got Spell Suppression. Uh, so Chaos Rares Life and then obviously the Implicits so Spell Suppression on the Implicit and then Rage on Hit so Rage is really really good um, thinking about incorporating a Bisco's Leash like swap for Rampage but I kind of can't be bothered so probably not going to be doing that um, yeah links I'm using for Ice Shot are Increased Crit Damage, Hyperthermia, Inspiration Trinity and then awakened elemental damage with attacks. Boots, I just got life tap, mark on hit, sniper's mark, obviously, for more projectiles. I've got my blink arrow in my boots here as well. And then the gloves, I've got anomalous precision, haste, enlighten, and wrath. And um, the reason I have these is if you don't want to run the item rarity stuff to see if it works, um, you can actually replace the precision here with the Herald of Ice. Um, and you will reserve, I think it's like one more mana or something. Like if I, uh, yeah, so I actually have one more mana if I put precision in the enlightened setup, whereas if I have it in the rarity, so that's why I've done that. Um, but yeah, and then obviously headhunter. So this is a headhunter build. I just want to make that very, very clear. This is a magic find headhunter build. You will not have nearly as much success or consistency on a character like this. Um, without a headhunter. Inspired Learnings is just so much worse. Um, I was using Inspired Learnings at the beginning of the league and the difference is substantial. So I would very much stray away from Magic Find um, if you don't have a headhunter. You can build a character like this with Inspired Learnings, you just have to drop quantity. Um, but to you know get this much quant on your gear and still feel sort of like viable, um, a headhunter is, is mandatory. I would, yeah, I can't stress that enough. Um, my quiver, same quiver as the first video, so it's just damage with both skills, crit chance, crit multi, life, additional arrow, and then I've crafted elemental damage with attacks, um, just because it was the best thing to go there, so that's why I've done that. And then my helmet, uh, mana reservation efficiency of skills, mana reduced, uh, reduced mana cost of attacks, and then spell suppression, intelligence, because I need it, life. Lightning res and then physical damage from hits taken as fire. Um, so that's that. I've got frost blink, steel skin, and the cast on crit mana forge setup. So this is like really gimmicky, but it works really well. So I've got my lightning arrow, which is being triggered by mana forge arrows. And I've got cast on crit, which is then triggering tornado as well as hydrosphere. And I have divergent inspiration in this connected to everything so that the mana cost is low enough for it to be consistent. So my Hydra Spear costs 16 mana, Tornado costs 21 mana, and my Lightning Arrow costs 10 mana. So having a nice mana pool to be able to get those off consistently um, works well. I haven't tried it with less mana. I'm sure it would work fine when I wasn't using an Enlightened level three, or when I was using an Enlightened level three, um, it was procking occasionally, like I would see the Tornadoes and the Hydra Spear. Um, but since I've got more mana, the procking is way more consistent. Um, and obviously with steel skin costing mana and basically being like used on cooldown, um, yeah, there might be a time where you don't have enough mana, for example. 
Um, the passive tree, I've made some changes because I'm still running Ancestral Vision. However, I made the decision. So I started using Greed's Embrace. However, I have dropped Grace for Haste. So the Haste essentially circumvents the reduced movement speed. So that's great. Um, and it gives me more attack speed and cast speed. So feels a bit faster it feels a lot better with grace if i wasn't if i was using grace um with this i probably wouldn't enjoy it and i wouldn't be able to so i've gone for um that instead and obviously i've lost my out of watcher's eye that gave me 15 percent chance to suppress spell damage with grace um, i've obviously dropped that and i managed to pick this up for 10 divines so attack damage while affected by precision increased critical chance while affected by wrath and you have phasing while affected by haste so i wanted precision and phasing and this one popped up for 10 divines so i brought it straight away because obviously it gives me quite a nice amount of base crit as you can see i'm at 57 percent here um, with the jewel sort of in there and without it i'm at 50 so it gives me seven percent base crit which is quite nice and obviously with the diamond flask i'm at 68 and it doesn't include power charges so that's made the crit really really good which has made the chilling and the freezing uh, more consistent with eye shot which is sort of one of the main defensive aspects of the build so i'm quite happy overall with that um down here i've got my lethal pride again obviously triple double damage and then i've gone for crystal skin here um to get corrupting so this is quite these nodes are like it's one of those things it's like a double-edged sword like it feels good almost it's over capping me like sh like a lot um, but not by as much as uh, you would think. So if I, you know, use a regret orb and I unspec those two, oh, I need two regret orbs. So if I uh, get another regret orb out, right, and I unspec these two nodes, so that and that. Obviously, I'm 118%, so I am overcapped by quite a lot because of ancestral vision, um, and that is because these nodes here are giving me you know quite a lot of ailment immunity however i'm not spell suppression capped unless i have these two nodes um so that is why i've gone for that because it gets me my spell suppression it gets me elemental ailment immunity and then it gets me corrupting blood immunity um and before i did this i had entrench here um, and then like these nodes around here so I had four nodes here so I've spent one two three four five six seven eight so it's quite an expensive investment but I couldn't really use the points anywhere else and with a headhunter it felt like it was pretty good um, to do that so obviously that's how I've got like some base layers of defense um, Pantheon I'm using soul of the Naris to avoid projectiles and reduce elemental damage taken if you've been hit recently and then avoiding projectiles that chained so that is really so projectiles that chained is probably going to be like the number one thing that would one shot you randomly um so that's why i've gone for that and then my soul like minor god is soul of shakiri shakira shakiri shakari whatever dude um let's just reduce chaos damage taken uh restoration of poisons and cannot be poisoned if you're running exarch altars though abarath is like mandatory but the strat i'm doing um i'm using blue altars and doing some quant stuff to like really make the most out of magic find which is the whole point of this character um pov will be in the description that's pretty much everything i've gone over uh this lionize here is pretty questionable um however the culling strike node here is like really valuable because just 10 percent more damage essentially because you're basically always critting um and these give you so much damage um especially and like the ailment increase as well um so it's like oh and it's hard to justify not going lion eyes here um because it's really really valuable but it is so many points um so it's like something i'm still not 100 percent certain out about to be completely honest but i've gone with the lion eyes it may be better to just go with two medium clusters and then possibly come down here pick up another dual socket and then pick up this dual socket here um but this character is doing the job more than i wanted it to um and it sort of fits like a really niche criteria like my character's managed to get itself into a position where it works really well um 
obviously I'm being able to able to reserve four auras um, and this amulet is sort of carrying quite a lot giving loads of resistances quant and mana reservation efficiency as well as having life um, overall I'm you know really really happy with how this has turned out obviously it's a magic find bow character so you can't be you know too uh, you know juiced um, but I managed to get from level 97 to 98 and then 15 percent into 98 without dying um, so it seems to have been pretty well I've, I feel like swapping to ice shot has just been way more consistent because you freeze and chill so much so more frequently um, that it just feels a lot more defensive than lightning arrow and I prefer ice shot in general it's just yeah it just feels a lot better um, but yeah that's pretty much the update for the magic fine character if you enjoyed the video um, please remember to subscribe it helps a lot and I will see you next time